Now, if you want to speed things up a little bit, there's a fair amount of material to come off there. A spoke shave is a wonderful tool as well. All right, back to fit number three. Make sure that we're fitting it the same way each time. We're look, looking at those little X's we made on there, or tape, or whatever you have crayon. Looking good here. Let's take a look. So this is the third fit. See where we need to take material down. So we gained, what did we gain? We gained almost an inch, almost an inch right there. And what's well, overexposed. There we go. Uh, but we're now we're coming up on that taper right there. This is always the part, the hardest part, you know, where takes the longest you get the most amount of wood to work with there but each time we're getting closer look at the fit though look at look at the look how good we are same way with the eye So I'm going to go back to the rasp here, starting to get to be too steep of an angle for the spoke shave. The round portion, the round portion here, of course. Okay, let's see how we're looking here. It's going on nicely. That's our last fit. Yep, that's our last fit, four fits there. So just to show you here, I'm not done with it yet there, but lighting, it's always about the lighting. Okay, you can see there, we're uh, coming up on the edges. See how we have those equal curly cues? real consistent that's telling us is that we're really driving that wood good into those corners and that's where you see beginners uh, myself included uh, where, where i really fell down was i always had gaps in there it was so disappointing but i haven't touched it that's one filing never touch that portion over there unless you absolutely have to but the edges just now starting to peel you can see them starting to curl up right there a little bit it's still a little dark sorry guys Someday maybe we'll have a pro cameraman. Wouldn't that be nice? Same, same right there, starting to cur curl. This is just, this is what you want. That's as good as it gets right there. So we'll just keep going. Now we can, f we're listening and feeling. I can feel it. I can hear it. When I've really reached the limit. Oh, this just couldn't be. Just couldn't be better, couldn't be better. Now look, you can see there, we got picked up a little bit more, a little more curling, starting to shave. What that's telling us is, is that we're in full contact with that whole handle from the outsides all the way around. It's gonna be perfectly seated. Here, right there, we're starting to cur get the curls of the wood shaving, picking up a little bit right there, you see that? But we can still go, we can still go more. I really can feel it, it bottoming out. It does not want to, it's starting to grumble now. You might be able to even, even hear it on your end. It just doesn't want to go any more than that. And let's take a little knife, something with a point on it. We can cut all these curly cues off. That's a sign of a, of a success there. That's a sign of a, this might be one of the best hangs I've ever done. And largely in part by such a 
wonderfully mated handle. I've just never seen that before. Usually I've had some bad luck with those factory handles, but this one here, boy, that is nice, isn't it? Look at that. Now we're ready to cut the handle. I like the, the handle to sit up a little proud of the eye of the axe. I think you get a little bit better fit. I think it looks, it looks nice. I have eyeballed those in the past and I've just about ruined a couple axe handles. So now we're ready for the wedge. Put a little boiled linseed oil on there. I'm going to coat the wedge too. So the nice thing about boiled linseed oil is, so how it, essentially how it works is people will say, well, if you have a loose ax head, you can put it in a bucket of water and that'll fix it. And indeed it will, but it's a temporary fix that will ultimately destroy the, the handle. And the reason being is, as, as, you know, just like when we're in water, you know, if you take a long shower, you come out and weigh yourself, you know, you'll, you'll be heavier. Your body will absorb some of that water. It's a nice wedge. Now it's a little bit fatter than I'd like. I'm going to trim a little bit of that. So, but the same principle, same thing goes for, uh, not too much. You'd be sorry if you take too much of that. Uh, same principle that happens here is that uh, the wood, of course, absorbs the water and swells, but like a hydraulic jacket, smashes the cells in the wood. And so when the, when the water leaves, when, when it's dried up, it's still a little wider than I'd like, uh, then it uh, has compressed the cells and so the fit is worse. Boiled linseed oil also goes in, swells the cells, but it stays there. It doesn't, you know, it has that has hydraulic uh, type of, uh, I guess, attributes, providing that you continue keep it in there. You know, you keep applying it every, I like that better there. One more. Um, and of course, wood, you know, really, the best thing you can do with your axe to, to take care of it, look at that bit on there, how it's sw drink, drink, drunk, drink. Good grief. It's absorbed the boiled linseed oil in there because wood is like a series of straws. It dries and, and receives, gives moisture, receives moisture from the end grain. And so when you, some people don't overlook that. They don't put the boiled linseed oil on there. And that's, and that's what goes down there and, and swells that head. That's what keeps your, your, keeps it tight. It's the most important place. That and the other end as well. Let's just play around with this. Let's see how that's gonna. I'm I'm very I'm very happy with the way this feels. Okay, next step. Okay, very very important this bit here. Once you kind of get it started, when you have a, a long wedge like this, it's gonna want to split on you. I hate to go to all this trouble have it split on you. Sometimes they will. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. One thing you can do to help it is to get yourself, I recommend hardwood. Hardwood's going to transfer the energy of the blow better than soft. And better than that is hardwood on end grain. This is hickory. It's so hard, it doesn't matter too much. So, so this is, I'm gonna, it's going to distribute the force. Now I'm watching this and I'm adjusting my blows according to how that wedge is going in there because it'll want to kind of seesaw rock down in there. This is why it's important to save sharpening your axe until the end, you know, you can see here. It's not unsharp, but it's not, not razor sharp or I'd be putting some tape or something on it. Starting to get those curls. You see the curls there coming up on the, on the wedge? 
Now with this, we're not going to get a whole bunch more than that. And that's another thing about the nice, the boiled linseed oil is it really acts as a, almost like a lubricant by helping that go down in there. How far you want to go with this is up to you. But, you know, when you start, when you start peeling wood up like that, I mean, you know, you're pretty tight. We can even start to see right there starting to get a flare out, kind of a mushroom at the end of it. We're almost there, guys. Don't stay tuned to the end. I'm gonna, one of you is going to have a chance to win this. And I'll tell you, it is a, it is a very, it was, a, it's a very nice ax. Now, before we take our step wedge in there, we can just take a little plane or a, Sandpaper, whatever you have. Boy, that is pretty. Nice contrasting colors. If you're going to use a plane like this, make sure you don't don't go over the edge. You'll break it. You you need th those wood fibers there are unsupported, and they'll they'll break over. You come back on it. Awesome. pretty. The little chamfer on the corners prevents or helps to prevent the split out. You, know, you can do sandpaper on this too, or a knife. You could easily do the same thing with your with your pocket knife if you had to. Just, just, well, that hickory is some amazing stuff. Got a little pencil line there. You can cut that off there. That'll it'll come off on its own. We're about ready for our... Yeah, that is really nice. That's nice. I even kind of like to have a little bit of a... Little, little bevel on there, right? Just kind of a little... Convex. Looks nice, custom. Obviously hand done. Boy, could not... It just couldn't be any better. All right, guys, this is the last bit. The dreaded step wedge. I say that because it's, no, they're, oftentimes they'll split your head, uh, but that's uh, not much you can do about it. It just happens sometimes. But one thing I have found is, is it does help to kind of put it at a little bit of an angle Kind of spread those wood fibers there a little bit. So we'll just, uh, and this is, this, you want to use a, a finish hammer, a metal, metal. You don't want to, to go with uh, plastic. So kind of determine that angle just a little slightly. Center it. Some people put two. Granddad always put two. That's pretty good. I'll do a little. We'll put a little dent in there and then readjust if I need to get it started straight. See my, like that. Yeah, they may split, you know, they sometimes they do, but I have never had a head come loose because they had, I did split a handle, but it's nice when they don't split. Yeah, we're going to split a little bit. It's just the way it is. Very minimal, though. So let's take a look at the end results there. Very happy with that little tiny little bit of a split right there, but I don't, that's fine with me. That's 
very done well. So what we're looking for is look at the fit around the eye. No gap there, both sides. And that should carry through to the other side there as well. You can see, maybe you can see right there. See how no gap, tight fit, resting securely on the shoulder. Right there. If we flip over to the other side, you'll see nice and tight. You see a little, maybe you can, a little bit of a gap right there. You're going to get that. These heads, these eyes, are they're, they're very imperfect. And uh, they just, uh, sometimes there's just no way with that. Don't worry about that. Main thing you want, you tight here on the edges, tight on the edges, and you're wedged in properly. This is, uh, this is very well, well hung. And it'll be a, it'll be a reliable tool for someone for a long time. So the reason I did this axe, um, or for that was for a couple reasons. For my new friends, uh, Amy and Justin. Uh, Amy and Justin uh, drove up uh, last week all the way from Texas uh, to help me video to run camera for, and and do the photography for the Leopold uh, Optics um, gun class. I mean, just, it was just, just wonderful folks, wonderful to meet them. Um, and as a, as a thank you, I wanted to, uh, to do this handle. And then we talked about, or he talked about, this is all his idea. He's going to do a giveaway to his YouTube channel. He's got a brand new homesteading channel. They have got, uh, got their land all in place. They're, they're doing what kind of what we did. They're a few steps behind us and going to be documenting that whole story on YouTube. So, um, what he's doing is to celebrate his 100, first 100 subscribers, he's going to do a giveaway of this particular axe. Uh, he did the restoration on it. He did the customization, um, the polishing. I did the handle, and I'll, I'll do the maker's mark on here, and I'll throw in a couple pencils as well. So the official Wrangler Star Carp, is that the, can you see that? The, the Ticonderoga and then the Ticonderoga Dixon Carpenter's Pencils. I'll throw those in as well. Um, so I just wanted to, again, say thank you to, uh, to Justin and Amy for doing that. Uh, it wouldn't have been possible without them, and I was uh, more than pleased to, to do this. It was a fun project, and this is beautiful. I mean, this is really a special, special act. So if you'd like to do that, or you'd like to enter to win this, uh, go down in the subject heading. I'll put a link to his channel. And I'll also put it at the end card at the end of this video. You can click on that. Just click on the picture there. Go on over there. And um, I don't know what the, how he's going to do it. It's all in his hands. I'm going to ship this back to him. Um, and then uh, he'll take it from there. But um, thanks again, Amy and Justin. It was wonderful to meet you. And good grief. Drive all the way up from Texas to help me out. Um, it just meant the, meant the world to me. So this was the least I could do. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Good luck. I hope you win this beautiful, beautiful axe. And we'll see you guys on the next video.